Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to talk about motions for summary judgment in civil litigation. So civil litigation is a court case where one party is suing another, uh, and a motion for summary judgment is one party requesting that the court enter judgment in their favor and against the other party without the need for a trial. So courts will typically grant the motion for summary judgment if the party that's filing it, the petitioner, uh, can show that there's no genuine issue of material fact for the court to decide and that that party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. So I want to unpack what those two things are and then explain the process a little bit. So the first requirement is that there's no genuine issue of material fact. So the purpose of a trial is for a jury or the judge to decide facts that are in dispute. So if the plaintiff says uh, the story goes one way and the defendant says, no, that's not true, the story really happened this way, the court or the jury at trial is going to decide which of those stories is more likely to be true. A 51% chance that, that the plaintiff's story is, is more likely to be true than the defendant's story. And that's the whole purpose of a trial, is for, uh, for each side's attorney to put on evidence to show that the facts are true as they claim them to be, not as the other side claims them to be. But sometimes in, in a uh, civil litigation case, either facts are not in dispute, so we all agree what happened and we're arguing over the law, um, or one side has the ability to prove their set of facts and the other side can't. So, it, for example, a conversation that only one side was privy to and they have an affidavit saying that this is how the situation happened and the other side doesn't have any contradictory facts, well, in either of those situations, either everyone agrees on all the facts or one side can't prove uh, or, or disprove the other side's version of the case, then a trial isn't necessary because there's nothing to be decided. All the facts are in agreement or unprovable. Um, so in, in that situation, the, the side that can prove all of its facts is going to file a motion for summary judgment requesting that judgment be entered in its favor without a trial. Now, the second element of a successful motion for summary judgment is not only do the facts not have to be dispute, but it, it not be in dispute, but you have to be entitled to judgment according to the law. So the way the law works is that we take the facts that are in front of us and look at case law or statutory law and apply those uh, legal principles to the facts to give a judgment for one side or the other. So a lot of the work on a motion for summary judgment is making the legal argument that given this set of facts that are not in dispute, my client is entitled to judgment in his, his or her favor. So even if there's a dispute between the two attorneys as to how the law should come down, a motion for summary judgment will still be appropriate because one or the other, if it's a purely legal issue, one side or the other is still going to be entitled to judgment and not need a trial to prove any facts. Uh, and the reason people do a motion for summary judgment is because trials are expensive and discovery work uh, to get the evidence needed for trial is expensive. Um, so doing a motion for summary judgment, while not inexpensive, is often a lot cheaper than actually putting on a full-blown trial. So if we can do away with the case at an earlier stage before a trial, everybody spends less in attorney's fees, and that's usually a win-win. Um, the downside for a motion for summary judgment is that if you pay for the motion, and they can cost a couple thousand dollars to put together, uh, if you pay your attorney to do the motion and you lose, then you still have to go forward and, and, and put on the trial. But I tell my clients that that's usually not a terrible, terrible thing, because even if you don't win on the motion for summary judgment, that doesn't mean you're going to lose a trial because the standard's different. You have, the burden on the, the movement uh, in the motion for summary judgment is much higher uh, than the person responding to the motion for summary judgment. They have to, there's a lot more you have to prove in a motion for summary judgment than you do at a trial, because you have to prove that the other side can't win. Um, so even if you lose the motion for summary judgment, you may still be able to win at trial, and it doesn't necessarily mean you have a bad case. And also, even if you lose the motion for summary judgment, the work that your attorney did to prepare for that is, is work that he or she is going to be able to apply at trial time. So that's stuff that they would have had to do to prepare for trial anyway, preparing evidence uh, and, and preparing your arguments and doing case law research is all, is all things that would have to go into putting on a trial. So it's really not a waste of money even if you lose 
um, on the motion for summary judgment because you're getting laying down your case and getting the groundwork you need uh, to later win at trial and you're going to be more prepared earlier than you would have been otherwise. Um, so now that we've talked about what a motion for summary judgment is and why people do them, uh, let's talk a little bit about what the process is. So the person, the movement, the person filing the motion for summary judgment will file a motion with the court requesting judgment in their favor. And then they'll file a brief called a memorandum uh, in support of the motion for summary judgment. And that's usually about a 15-page legal brief that lays out the facts that are undisputed and then lays out what the law is and why that party is entitled to judgment as a matter of law. And it'll also, also be accompanied by uh, affidavits or any evidence that uh, that supports it. So it's usually a pretty big prospect to put this brief together because there's it's a compilation of all the evidence in the case and that's usually half the battle. But once that brief is filed, uh, the other side will typically have about a month to file a response brief, um, meaning that they respond to the arguments made in the motion for summary judgment and the memorandum filed along with it. Uh, and they also uh, have to refute any facts that the other side has laid out. So if the other side says, here's the set of facts that we have to prove to win our case, and the other side can't disprove them, then the person responding to the motion for summary judgment either has to disprove some of those facts through their own affidavits or evidence, or raise an affirmative defense or some other outside issue that defeats that uh, the, the case in chief that's been put on by the movement. So that's what the response is for. It's to counter legal arguments and counter factual arguments. And finally, uh, the, the party that filed the motion for summary judgment originally will typically have 14 days or so to file something called the reply brief, where they respond to the arguments made by the other side in the response brief. So we've got three briefs that are on file before the court. The memorandum in support of the motion, the response brief by the person defending the motion, and then the reply brief by the person in favor of the motion. And once all those briefs are on file with the court and have been exchanged to both sides, there's going to be a hearing held uh, where there's an oral argument held uh, between the attorneys. So sometimes judges will do a really good job and read all the briefs in detail, do their own independent case law research, and be prepared with simply questions for the attorneys to answer in the oral argument. And the judge will kind of guide the oral argument and say, well, I read your briefs. Here's what I want to know to answer these questions, or here's my issue with your argument, can you respond to it? Um, sometimes judges will just skim the briefs, and it, rather than asking pointed questions, they'll just allow one side to make their case, the other side to respond to it, and then a counter-argument from the, the side that filed the motion, just like the briefs, the side, the side that filed the motion gets to go twice. So that's where courtrooms get interesting, because you've got two attorneys arguing back and forth, making the case for why they're a uh, motion should either be granted or the motion should be denied. And typically the attorneys will expand on what they said in, in the briefs and not just repeat them, but they'll, they'll hit the major arguments. Once the motions have, the motion's been filed, the briefs have been filed, an oral argument has been conducted, then the judge will usually take it under consideration. They won't usually rule the same day. But they'll take the motion under consideration and will come back for a ruling. And if the side that filed the motion for summary judgment wins, then the case is over and judgment is entered in favor of uh, that side. Uh, if they lose, then the case continues and moves forward from whatever point it was at before the motion for summary judgment was filed. I should say sometimes people will file motions for partial summary judgment. So if they, when you file a complaint, you, oftentimes there will be multiple counts. So each cause of action, you know, assault is one count, battery is a second count, theft is a third count. They're each different uh different causes of action. Um, so sometimes parties will file a partial mo motion for summary judgment just seeking judgment on one or two counts out of five. Uh, sometimes they'll seek judgment on all counts um, and only one or two will be granted. So winning on a motion for summary judgment isn't always an all or nothing proposition. And the upside to getting those counts dismissed uh, if you're or, or winning on one or two counts is that those are things you don't have to argue about at trial. You've already won them. Um, and, and the less balls you can have in the air at trial, the better. So thank you for listening. If you have any questions about litigation or any of the other practice areas we do and we cover just about anything, uh, you can give me a call at 630-324-6666 to schedule an initial consultation. You can also go to learn-about-law.com uh, to see 
podcast to see videos, hear podcasts, and read a whole lot of articles we have on a bunch of different legal topics meant for non-lawyers. So uh, thanks for listening. Thank you.